Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha, this is Jeeps here, your old composer, decomposing before your very eyes songs that you suggest. And this is number 26 on my countdown from 30 to celebrate my one year anniversary on November 18th. And uh, it popped up as a suggestion that I go back and listen to Porcupine Trees Trains. Now I definitely have done a couple of Porcupine Tree during my journey here with you guys on this channel, which has just been absolutely wonderful and amazing that I get to do this with you guys. And uh, so, needless to say, let's just get right into it. Uh, you guys know the jig, though. If you guys want to support me because these don't monetize my channel, you want to buy me a cup of coffee, it also helps what I do with the kids. If you want to check out my headsets, I even put a link now for the cap. I've had a few people ask me about my Newsboy cap, so you can find the links and also the link for Porcupine Tree and my Patreon down below. All right, guys, let's do this. Porcupine Tree trains. All right. Trains set and match spite under the blind. Shiny and contoured, the railway winds. And I've heard this sound from my cousin's bed, the hiss of the train at. I just so love um, uh, acoustic compositions and you know <clears throat> what what is so wonderful about this is so moving for, for me so when I'm listening to the guitars as a composer as somebody who's just done this for just such a long time you know hearing the precision the crispiness the great recording of these two guitars that are being played in unison that's what it sounds like to me very clean very crispy, um, not over compressed, um, by virtue of probably having the best mics, compression, studio, wherever they're recording, um, not having to have any kind of post on it uh, effect, anything beyond the actual signal of the guitar. And what I mean for all of us who are pure listeners, because I am even on a journey like this, is that there's no reverb, there's no delay, there's nothing added to it to give it uh, an affected tail at the end. And it's just such a very unique experience because it really feels like it's just really intimate and in your face. His voice is absolutely wonderful. And what I mean by that is um, he's, he's in this, he, whatever his comfort register is in this higher, you know, parts that he's singing. I, I'm not much of a vocal coach. Well, I'm not a vocal coach, but I know a little bit about it. And when he's going up into these really high notes, He's staying in a very comfortable spot in here. It's not like a head voice, like, you know, when you could talk like Minnie Mouse and you could do this. It's, it could be kind of like a head voice thing. And he's keeping it from here, and you could feel, you could feel that just the way the air is coming through his, 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 uh, his throat and his performance and everything. You can actually you feel it. You just feel the emotion of that. 
Uh, obviously, when the drums come in, you saw me, I kind of jumped a little bit because I was so gliding with that arrangement. And before the drums came in, too, there was a really cool, sounded like, uh, some reverse um, work, probably done with a guitar. I wouldn't know. I wasn't at the session. But you kind of hear this kind of pseudo-reverse work. And so I'm, I'm going to assume that it's a guitar, but I'm sure that for those of you who are Porcupine Tree fans, maybe you'll have a little more information for me. But I love that. Very subtle. But it kind of, it does, it kind of, it pulls and pulls at you, you know. And then, um, and then when the, more of the power came and the drums came in and stuff, it sounded like there was a, um, I, I can't, I can't, I can't pin the type of an organ or something in the background uh, that was actually just holding down these uh, rhythmic pattern in the back. But I really like that, that kind of percussive approach to the, um, to the arrangement on that. And then, uh, of course, I, I'm just glazing right now on the vocals and stuff. But I want to get right back into it because I'll, uh, I'll light up a little more on uh, performance and production in a little bit. But I want to get right back into it. I'm sorry, I'll get back into that. That was such a cool passage right there. Gives me enough time to really get into like what they're doing, having, you know, the banjo, sounds like the banjo. Uh, that's right up the middle. So if you're listening to headsets, obviously that's what you're hearing in the middle. I think it's, it's pretty discernible that it's banjo, but could be wrong, could be something else. Um, but it has a very unique picking configuration, very clean, very consistent all the way through it. And with the guitar, I'm waiting for something to come with this because it's like, it sounds so cool. They've got to be leading into it. And then once they brought in that other guitar on this side, really super beautiful, clean sounding guitar. And with um, the voicings of that particular uh, playing on that side was very wide open and very beautiful. What I mean by that is it's the intervals, the voicings that are being chosen to play and letting him ring through. And in what otherwise is a very straightforward percussive section. So you have the guitar that's just strumming the pattern, you know, making the chord changes, right? You know, that's the great thing about an acoustic guitar that's sometimes so in of itself satisfying it with songs because not only does it play, you play chords, you're gonna get chords, but the rhythmical playing of it, the right hand of it, be it picking or with a pick, is so significant with the instrument that it is a standalone instrument and you can do wonders with it. So you have the pattern going on, then you have uh, the banjo that is playing this kind of arpeggiation um, or series of notes, whatever you wanna call it. There's a diff few different names depending on how you're looking at it really nice it settles you into it but then as soon as this other guitar comes in it gives it the depth and the ambiance 
that kind of starts to, it indicates to you that we're about to go down into another journey. Like we've kind of just kind of came up to the clouds and kind of chilled with this rhythm pattern. You know, the banjo, <coughs> excuse me, the banjo, you got the shaker that's going on and something like that. And then all of a sudden with that other guitar coming in, it just kind of lights it up. And it's almost like, well, I thought I was at the top of the ride. Now I'm going to go up into another, you know, kind of go up into the clouds kind of vibe stuff. That was beautiful. I so dug that. All right, let's see where we're going now. I'm kissing you wide Hissing subsides I'm in love When the evening reaches here You're tying me up I'm dying of love It's okay Ah, that's a very cool way to end that track. One of the things I want to bring up, um, when I just started this last passage, that you know, all the way to the end, a really super slick maneuver in engineering, and 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 also, you know, the master composer of a song. In most cases, there's always one individual per song that's leading the charge, even if it's a whole band that's writing it. Um, there's always one that has a vision, and I know that might sound odd because we're listening to music, you know, but a lot of times I find myself composing, ba well, because I'm a media composer, most of the time I, I'm actually writing because of vision, being influenced sometimes by it. But in my mind, a lot, <coughs> excuse me, in the past when I've worked on certain projects, the fact that right when I started back on this last passage, did you notice everything just went mono? That really nice guitar that was over here came here, the voice stayed here, except occasionally that little percussive clap kind of showed up a little bit just to remind you that there was some depth there. And that kind of hung on there for about, I want to say, maybe eight bars, 12 bars or something. And it stayed in that pocket. And I'm, I'm, I'm itching, I'm looking at how much time is left and I'm itching, I'm going, okay, these guys are gonna change this up and they're gonna blow something up and they did. And when they came in with the drums and the guitars came in and you know, back into it, they bloomed, they kind of went mono into And to me, just the effect, the, the, the vibe that I got was remember I was saying, oh, and then I'm going up a little more. And then what that was was like, oh, there's that like mono section it was like tick, 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 you know, going up on a little bit of a roller coaster. And then when it went, you know, into the full stereo, you know, for this last minute, or minute and a half, um, it was like that was the release, you know. And uh, I loved the harmonies on the background vocals. This is just in of itself music that that transcends um, a lot of different um, people's soundtrack of life. So you could be the most you know gnarliest of metal, you know, fans, and not everybody is just one thing, you know. Though <laughs> I've gotten some comments going, dude. You're drifting. I like doing one thing, but you know this is that's what their focus is at the moment. But you find, at least I'm finding in this journey, that a lot of people that are think I'm thinking, well, this is the heavier stuff and all. And then I I do a track like this is suggested to me, and people go, oh my god, it's one of my favorite songs. I used to, you know, I use this to kind of chill out coming back from work and stuff like that. And it, and for me, it's a it's it's eye opening. It's awakening to the depth, and 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 
the broadness, if that's such a word, of people's soundtrack of life and the songs that, you know, they pull from. And this is one of these songs to me that um, has a such a huge, broad appeal, I believe, you know, across the board, many genres, especially when it's composed and written the way it is. And then, of course, the melody was beautiful as well. You know, there's only so much I... Sometimes I get so caught up in, in listening to certain things that I forget, oh, man, I'm going to mention something about that, and I don't, but, you know... Um, but that's just what I do here the best that I possibly can. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. You know where the links is for the bo uh, box. Yeah, the box of coffee. A uh, cup of coffee, their Patreon, the headsets, the cap, the whole thing. All the links are down below. And I'm getting really excited, heading towards my one-year anniversary, November 18th. Got a very special day planned for that. Uh, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Aloha. Um... <laughs>